Yeah, so we were just talking about the uh, fruitfulness or, you know, this period of, of quarantine that's, you know, allowed you to, you know, take care of some of your writings, you know, and I've been, you know, over here and... You were reading one now. Right, right, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, reading uh, Blessed Are Those, a, re a, a new, revamped work yeah, of new, that... Uh, new version, final version. Old text that's up on Kindle now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, and you've read me some uh, some of your other stuff that you're working on as well, mm -hmm. and... Uh, yeah, it seems like you're, you know, you're keeping at it and, you know, keeping the work going. Mm -hmm. And then, um, in terms yeah, I'm not a writer, but I take notes. Mm -hmm. I take notes of insights. I'm not an ordinary writer. I'm not interested in writing, but I take notes. Yeah. I, I, jot, I jot things down I feel important that are given to me to jot down. And then before long, you know, it might become a, a book. Mm -hmm. I'm a of notes. Not an attitude to write, just, just inspired by what I receive. And what I talk about, what arises in me when people are in my company, mm. it's not for me; it's for them. Yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah and, and one work that we were discussing uh, that I've read, uh, titled uh, "Once Is for Always," is about your your account or your time with uh, the Eckenkar people, um, Twitchell, and uh, you know those people there, and spending mm. time. I just wanted to he hear maybe about. Uh, yeah, what you took from that experience, or what was the most important thing that you took from from that experience of mm -hmm. uh, you know being with those that group? Well, I think I think initially it sounded like a lot of science fiction, because Paul Paul Churchill was was writing as a science fiction writer, right, which is what he was, but also also a certain kind of religious adept. And, and you know, that's not merely my opinion. That's what I heard from um, Kirpal Singh, right? Or, or it is said that he said that some kind of writing, where well, he said, yeah, he knew Paul Churchill. He was his student for eight years. You can't be a student of Kirchhoff's things for eight years and not make progress. It's not possible. Yeah. So I sat with Kirchhoff's Singh, and I felt he was very pure, very strong, maybe conventional person, but he was a very strong, powerful, you know, very luminous person, right? I don't know if he was the chairman of the world religions at one point, but I, I can see why he had that kind of presence and power. And so uh, then there's the American version of what Kirpo was doing, which is a, he's working from the Shurat Shab Yoga people who work with the inner ear and the inner hearing and the inner sound. And I was drawn to that. I was very curious about what that could be. And then the, the conversation was about like the, 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 the planes, the chakras, the planes and their rulerships and their leaders and all of this sort of like uh, science fiction, you know, like otherworldly stuff. But it wasn't, it was an inner world. But it still sounded like science fiction, you know, unless it happens to you, right? It sounds very, very remote, remote right? And uh, so I, I was drawn into it <clears throat> and I wound up connecting with the master who was also a musician we played. He was like a, like an up-and-coming jazz musician, xylophone player, and a singer. He was a very sweet singer. Darwin Gross is his name. He was Sri Darwin Gross. He was a master there. And I can understand why Paul, if Paul was, I wasn't around Paul, so I couldn't tell you, you know, exactly what it was that he was up to in a certain way. I mean, it's, we, we have the writings, and we have uh, Darwin, who was with him and trained by him, so I can only go by him by that, and so, uh, <clears throat> no, it became more than science fiction. Uh, and uh, I can't say much beyond that. It's kind of like uh, science fiction, <laughs> you'd have to call it that, like, you know, like, like something happening and taking you to another planet. It, it, it's like that, it really is. Like, like you would imagine what that is, and this is definitely, uh, my experiences were very much like that. Otherworldly, yeah, I'm not sure. I won't say we left the solar system, um, but it was it was very much like like a science fiction uh, experience, right? And um, so it was very inspiring. Uh, not exactly what I I had uh, intended or imagined as an individual. No, some something gone, something else. Um, was it was it merely my belief? I don't know about that. Was it what I would call a tangible experience? Yeah. Was, was it in, in the dream body? 
Yeah. All right. Was it according to what Paul was talking about? Precisely. I had everybody has doubts about it. When you read it, it's like, no, no, this is great science fiction here. Until you're on that conveyor belt and you're you're on your way up, and you're like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Fantasy, imagination, you have to be true to what's real for you, right? And um, so I got, I, I was drawn to Darwin, very, very close to him. And uh, so I knew things because he and I were in correspondence. He was a man's son. I was being groomed for leadership based upon what I was writing and what, what he was seeing I was where I was coming from and his secretary BB Bernadette Berlin another beautiful being who was part of Paul Twitchell's work she was probably initiative his and so all of this was like certification to me right so I can say I've had egg mastership training any comments on that for sure and you see me with Darwin so you know, there's something there. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We, we are beyond the planes, which is my, my point to you. We are beyond this world, but we're not living like that. We're, we're living like we're stuck in this world. But we are already way beyond this world, but we're not at, at that place within ourselves where we are that. So that's being honest and being true to the point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I was introduced to the act people as a, like a master, right? which I don't, I don't use that word exactly, but they do, right? and it's in the book, once is for always, and I'm not claiming to be anything, but I have experience as a spirit soul, and that's what I, I, I'm talking about, my experience as a spirit soul, whether it's somebody's idea of mastery or, or not, that's not up to me. But what I learned there, more than anything else, is detachment. See, in other words, based upon what I just said, or what was just said through me, in a sense, that, uh, yeah, we're way beyond all of this. When are you going to allow that to be the truth for you? Huh? So the, the only way you're going to get there is to be detached from all the things you think you are and believe you've been you know, conditioned to, to know and experience as yourself. And maybe in the peeling of, of that detachment, you might get to what you might be, and it might not be altogether human. So you might just be a spirit soul. And, and not all that you, you've been conditioned to believe you are as truth. Well, karmically, yeah, yeah. blood-wise, river of blood, uh, you know, karma, let's say, uh, ruling, yes, you are. A handsome white guy out here, right? <laughs> a babe's love, right? And a bass player, whatever. And I'm a not so handsome brown guy. <laughs> and I don't know how to play guitar or anything else. <laughs> Granted, no doubt, right? Uh, but I have a, a, a message here. I have an understanding. I have a cultural, let's say, uh, power that I gained through my ancestry. And uh, I use it very, very uh, humbly and compassionately to serve other people. And I've had all this other training, which was important in terms of being noble uh, and uh, being a good spirit. Uh, this, yeah. mm -hmm. 